The second thing is the parking map that we've done. I have sent it on Facebook and WhatsApp group. Hopefully most of you have seen it. However, there have been a few, since I did this map, like six months ago, there have been some updates. So inshallah we will go and update the things that need to change. The blue you see on the, on the PowerPoint is where the hole is. The green lines are meant to be places you can park for the whole night. Yellow is a few hours, so usually the yellow is two hours and the red are places like permit only that you should not be parking there. So if you have parked there, you might want to go because in the past we have um, received some fines unfortunately. Next thing I want to talk about is the children's program. Alhamdulillah, we've had a team that have worked very hard um, for the past few months to put together a children's program and I think it's important to mention a few things. Number one, this is not a babysitting program. This is not for parents to just drop off their kids so that they can come here and listen to the program or the kids don't bother us. That's not what it's meant for at all. This is actually a program that's made to help and graduate the children. So inshallah, within two years time or so, they can sit here among us and actually benefit from the speakers. Um, the aim of this year's children's program is to talk to the children and relate their journeys to the journey of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and inshallah also help them to be part of the companions of Imam Al-Asri al-Zaman, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Um, another thing that's happened this year that I thought might be worthwhile just to mention quickly is that traditionally most of us, most people in the community have seen this Muharram program as a beacon of hope program. And obviously even since then it's always been beyond that. We've always had so much help from different organizations and people from the community. But this year, the Beacon of Hope team and management have decided to officially pass the torch to Australian Maid. So, inshallah, from now moving forward, this is going to be under the banner of Australian Maid. Inshallah, nothing's going to change. All the faces are the same. And even members of Beacon of Hope are going to continue helping and aiding in the program. Another thing that's very important is with regards to your support um, and donations. This would never happen if it wasn't for all of your generosity your continuous support. Um, we ask that inshallah you continue that. There are a few nights that are still open for food sponsorship or complete sponsorship of a whole night. So once again, um, we would like to ask for your generosity if you could help. This will go a long way to help us with this program this year and future programs and all, um, not just Muharram, but even other religious programs. Inshallah, there are big plans for the rest of this year. Um, another thing, and this one will be the last one, inshallah, before I introduce the dear Sayyid, and that's um, with the unfortunate circumstances that happened with Brother Hassan and Nashid. So we had booked him about a year in advance, and his on the day of his flight, um, unfortunately the American Customs, for whatever reason, didn't allow him to board his plane, and his ticket was cancelled. We, tr we tried to rectify that, and alhamdulillah we were able to, but there were no tickets available for him to come to Melbourne in time. Um, we were so blessed. Alhamdulillah, um, that Sayyid Samer was going to fly out the next day. When I called him, he was actually packing his bags. And I think, I can't believe how easy it was for him to say, whatever this community needs, I'm a servant, I'm happy to help. I think everybody needs to just put that in context, that we're asking him to talk for 10 nights with two days notice. Um, while him and his whole family were planning to go back to Qom. So Sayyid is truly greatly appreciated. And you know, this is a mammoth task you've, you've taken and we really do appreciate it. Thank you. And with that, inshallah, I'll introduce our beloved Sayyid. Uh, Sayyid Samad al-Hakim is a practicing pharmacist since 1999 with a degree from Monash University in Melbourne. In 2014, he began studying in the seminary of Qom. By 2020, he completed his bachelor's degree specializing in Quranic sciences, writing a thesis on the importance of methodology of memorizing the Holy Quran. He has finished his master's in exegesis and Quranic sciences with a master's thesis entitled Education, the Holy Quran and the United Nations 2030 Agenda. Sayyid Samar enjoys interacting with those who have a desire to learn. Among the courses he has conducted are spoken Arabic, health and well-being in Islamic traditions, the Holy Quran, understanding translation and concept, Islamic jurisprudence and migration. Sayyid Samad has authorized migration and the choice between a permissible difficulty and a forbidden ease in 2022 
and Pursuing Excellence, the guide to memorizing the Holy Quran available online. He has also translated two works of Sheikh Mohsen Qara'ati, Parables, Important Questions, Simple Answers in 2017, and Ramadan with the Holy Quran, 30 Lessons in 30 Days. With that, I would like to ask our dear Sayyid to join us, and if we could all please welcome him with a loud salawat. Ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad.
to ensure that we, as Muslims, sit down and write down a resolution. How can I be a better person? How can I prepare for the reappearance of the Imam? If I can prepare myself to be ready for the Imam, I am a better person and I am following the steps of Imam Hussein. If you attended the Jafariya lectures, I was talking about symbolism. وَمَنْ يُعَطِّمْ شَغَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whoever reveres the symbols of Allah that is from the piety of the heart. And Imam Hussain a.s. is a symbol. Muharram is a symbol. Arba'in is a symbol. All those are symbols. It is said that the Prophet has said مَنْ حَجَّ فَلَمْ يَرْخَرْ وَلَمْ يَفْسُقْ رَجَعَ كَيَوْمَ وَلَدَتْهُ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ Is that right? Did I say that right? وَلَدَتْهُ وَلَدَتْهُ أُمُّهُ Thank you. Whoever goes to do the, the to perform the uh, pilgrimage and does not seek intimacy with his wife and does not do fisk he comes back as if his mother has just given birth to him. In other words, sinless. Likewise for Imam Hussein. It is said in a narration, in a long narration by Imam Sadiq that the one who mentions Imam Hussein and sheds a tear as much as the size of a wing on a fly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be will not suffice for less than heaven for this person, less than paradise. But it's conditional, right? This isn't just about crying and that's it. The next day you do your sin and you go on your uh, daily life just as if nothing happened. No. Muharram and the first of Muharram, the night of the first of Muharram, this is the night where we have to say to ourselves, okay, it's a new year for us and I'm going to start. And during these two, 10 nights, inshallah, we will go through these different phases. I'll have something, inshallah, for every one of us. Whether you are young, you're just starting out on this journey, you are weak, in other words, you don't have the strength of a full-grown adult. You're in your youth, you're a child, you're in your youth, early childhood. We'll take advice from the Ahlul Bayt, from the Quran, as to who we should be, what we should do. And then we'll go up to this strong, the young man, the young woman, who now has strength, MashaAllah, and they start, astaghfirullah, none of you of course, but they start becoming arrogant, for example. The very parents that were looking after them when they were weak, they start, Mama, Baba, what do you want from me, man? What is this? We'll talk about the relationship between the strong and the weak, between the parent and the child, between the child and the parent. We want to talk about all of that. And then towards the end of the 10 nights, we want to talk about the week again. And notice in the Holy Quran, in the second laugh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions washayba also. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. So the plan is this. Talk about our early childhood through to young adulthood, even marriage, we'll discuss marriage, and choice of spouse. And then we go through to the end where we fall few weak. And then what is the relationship between that strong and the weak again? See, it seems that the strong in the middle are sandwiched between two weak, right? You've got your children on one side and your parents, you've got to look after both. And you've got to work, and all these, all these things. What do the Ahl al say about that? What is our role and responsibility? In order to improve ourselves and better ourselves, we need to understand where we are right now. What stage are we? Am I in the weak stage? Am I in the strong stage? What is my duty towards this group of people? And what is my group duty towards that group of people? Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So every time I say salawat, you give me another one, so I get encouraged. Let's go back to this ayah. It begins with Allah. 
Allahul ladhi khalaqakum. Now, if you want to Hussain Mekki's lectures, which reminds me, by the way, Hussain Mekki was a Mekki guy, right? No, not really. No. It's a great speech. You, don't, you took half my speech, man. You don't need to, I don't need to be here. It was very good. Well, if you went to St. Mekki's lectures, he spoke about worldview, right? This is the first thing that we really need to face. He spoke about a worldview that is divine, ilahi, and a worldview that is material. And it's important to get that right. If we haven't got that right yet, that is your step number one. Step number one, get your worldview right. Who am I? Even if you're not aware of it, it makes a difference in your decisions. Who you marry, what school you go to, the teacher you choose, the way you talk to your parents, the transactions you make, the sale and the buying transactions that you make, the business you choose, everything the television shows you, you watch anything. The world view makes a difference. So it's important to understand who I am in terms of my worldview. If it's materialistic, it's one thing. If it's divine, it's another. So really what we need to know is understand Allah. And the Holy Quran tries. And the Ahlul Bayt tells us within our capacity who Allah is. But really, if I take this glass of water, what has the most volume? The water or the container that the water is in? Which, the water has more volume than the container. Which one is it? The container or the water? Which one is bigger? The container or the container? The, the container is bigger. The contained that has to be within the container, right? So the water is smaller. Now, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, you know, وَسِعَتْ رَحْمَتُهُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ Right? His mercy encompasses everything. If Allah encompasses everything, then who am I, the insignificant particle in the universe who wants to understand God? Right? I'm, a, imagine, a small H2O atom in this glass of water and I'm trying to figure out what color the container is. It's not possible, but, but, he gives us hints. So for example, in the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa, alimu al-ghayb wa al-shahad, huwa al-rahman al-rahim. Then he goes again in Surah Al-Hash, the last few ayahs. Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa, and he gives us, Description Al Malik al Quddus. And he keeps on in describing Allah, 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 you know, the merciful one, Ar Rahman, the beneficent, the merciful one. And then he goes, Al Malik al Quddus, Al Salam, Al Mu'min, Al Muhammad. Each one of these words is a whole book to just, you know, a series of seminars. Just to understand what these words mean. They try to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries to, within our capacity, explain who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. But at the end of the day, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar than what? When the Imams were asked, a man said to Imam Sadiq Allahu Akbar, or he said in his presence, and Imam Sadiq said, Allahu Akbar than what? What do you mean, Allahu Akbar? No, no, Allahu Akbar than everything. He's bigger than everything. <laughs> you had that too. You lived it. As soon as you say he's bigger than so and so, you've limited him. You, we can't comprehend. Allahu Akbar mimma yusaf. You can't even describe him. Anything, any description that you give, he is bigger than that. So, that's the start. Our worldview. We need to research who we want to be in terms of the worldview. If you can get the worldview correct, everything becomes easier. Back to the ayah, Allah will let you khalaqakum. Allah is the one that created you. And this could be an answer to a question, who is God? Or it could be just a sentence that describes to you, Allah, in both ways it's Jumla Khabari, it's giving you a piece of news. God is the one that created you. Meaning what? 
means we have a creator. What did he create us from? Allah الذي خلقكم من طعفين from a weakness. As children, we don't even have the power to move the fly that's annoying us. We don't even know the parents at the initial stages. We don't even recognize our parents who love us and who would give their lives to, for us. We don't even, like, we can't even see, really, during infancy. And then we grow up. And then we become strong. Right? Describe that. And then, ثُمَّ جَعَلَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَعْفٍ مِنْ بَعْدِ قُوَّةٍ ضَعْفًا وَشَيْبًا Now why Shayba here? Why did he add this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't say anything about Allah الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِنْ ضَعْفٍ and something else to, you know, emphasize the young age. Why did he add Shayba here? Brothers and sisters, if there's one thing that we should take away from tonight, don't live to regret it. When we become older, we've had more experience, we are wiser, we've learned, right? And sometimes, most times, we'll look back and regret. This old age, this grey hair that appears, right? Washeba is an additional attributes. Not just, we're not just weak anymore. We're not just weak anymore. Initially when we were infants, we were weak. We didn't know what's going on. We're children. Jahil, right? Jahil. And by the way, don't call your children Jahil because it's, it means they're what? Ignorant. Call them Atfal. Atfali. My children. Abedai. That's a better way to say it. If you say Jahali, I don't know what she said, I'm going to Jahali, Jahali. Like this, my 20 year old ignorant person is just coming. <laughs> so there's an element of regret in this old age. What we want to do is we want to make sure tonight we start a new journey. Tonight, inshallah, and for the next 10 nights, we're going to draw a plan where whatever stage you're in, we're going to have something for us to look forward to and work on throughout the year. Have I sold it yet? Will we come back tomorrow? Inshallah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. One last thing on this from Al Mizan al Alama Tawatawa. He says that there is tankir in this ba'af al quwwah. Tankir means that it's an indefinite article. Right? When I say a book, an indefinite book, it's a book. But if I say the book, it means I mean a particular book. Here, La'af wa Uwa is, has tenkir in it. It is an indefinite article. That means, or it signifies, it's an ishara. It's a, uh, so it gives us a point to ponder on the different levels of weaknesses that we have. So we might be physically weak, mentally strong, mentally weak, physically strong, we might have certain mental strengths, for example, mathematics, but we're weak in, for example, writing skills. And likewise, physically, we might have different strengths and um, weaknesses. Either way, when we're looking to improve ourselves, when we're looking to make sure that we are on the right path, we need to look for the experts. And the best expert, the best guide for us, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran and the Ahl al-Bayt. In order to do this and to start this journey, so assuming we've got the world view set up, we have to understand and know ourselves. Am I making this up? No. The Holy Quran says, Alaykum anfusakum. What does that mean? It means upon you is your sons. That doesn't mean that some people have said this. Like when I recite this ayah, Oh, you believe, protect yourselves and your family. Some people come back and say, hang on a minute. 
This is probably the only selfish provision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just telling you to look out to yourself and your family. Forget everyone else. What about the community? Aren't you supposed to give for everyone else? And aren't you supposed to like protect everyone? Yes, we are. We are. The ayat of the Holy Quran are plenty, the advice is plenty about Nahi Ali Munkar, forbidding the evil, Al Amr al Ma'roof, all of these things, enjoining the good, all of these things are in the Holy Quran, they are in the Ahlul Bayt, but when we come to a point where they're not listening to us, Alaykum and Fusakum. You do your best, but at the end of the day, you're not responsible for their sins. Who are you responsible for? Yourself. Even Shaytan, even Shaytan on the day of judgment is going to say, hey, bro, I'm, a, I'm worried by God, I'm not with you. And you, you told me to do this. Okay. I, just, I didn't tell you to do it. I just whispered, you follow, you did it. You did it. No, sorry, not you, but just you in general. Salli ala Muhammad, but... And don't be like the ones who forgot Allah, so He made them forget themselves. It is they who are truly rebellious. So you can see the relationship between the worldview that we need to have, the divine one, Allah. We can't forget Allah in the worldview that we have. We can't. If you do, you've gone to a separate, different worldview, a material worldview. Right? You can't forget about Allah in your worldview because if you do, you're going to forget about, or you will forget about yourself. He made them forget themselves. He with a capital H, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, moving on. How much time do I have? 15 minutes, okay. How do we start knowing ourselves? The first thing we need to know is, you know how in school they teach us that we're um, from the animal kingdom, right? We evolved from... Okay. You tell them your grandparents are monkeys, my grandparents are human. Thank you. We need to know that there is a difference between monkeys and humans, animals and Humans, plants and humans, rocks and humans. They're all makhluqat, they're all the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is fine, it's great, we have to respect. You know, even the dog that we consider nijas and usually go ooh, ooh, because we've been taught to, to do that. It's the creation of Allah and we have to respect that animal um, as a creation of Allah. But we have to know, the Quran says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبِرْ Mankind has this karamas. It's different. What is different about mankind? We have to know this. Even in Arabic, when they teach us logic, they go, al insan, ta'if al insan. What is insan? They give us a ta'if is what? Definition, ahsan. They give us a definition of al insan. Al insan, haywan al They say that human beings are, is an animal. That speaks. Yamto. Okay? So even in Arabic they have that. But there's a difference. What is the difference? Intellect. We all have animals and plants, and uh, sorry, humans. Animals and humans have this shared attribute of shakwa, the desires, right? And they also have anger, which we need to control. But there's also intellect that the animals don't have. This is what makes us different as human beings. So we need to use that intellect in order to grow. Now, what is the goal of knowing yourselves? This is the goal. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyatuha nafsu al-mutma'inna irja'i ila rabbiki rabbiki raliyatan mardiyya the translation of this 
These four beings, Ayat, Musulat al Fajr, or Soul at Peace. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. That's our goal. That's our goal. That's who we want to be. We want to be a nafsul mutma'in. A nafsul mutma'inna. We want to have a qalbun saleem. We want, when we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what do we want to give him? Who's going to enter paradise? The one who carries with him a qalb that is saleem. That has no impurities in it. That is our goal. And through these stages that we're going to go through, we'll be leading, inshallah, some practical issues, practical examples of what we can do in different scenarios. Now, notice here it says, فَدْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي Right? يَا يَتُهَا النَّفْسُ مُطْمَئِنَّا إِرْجَعِي إِلَىٰ رَبِّكِ رَابِيَةً مَرْبِيَةً Come back to your Lord. Well pleased, well pleasing. You are pleased with Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with you. فَدْخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي Come enter my worship. وَدْخُلِي جَنَّتِي You know, we need this. We really do. We need to know that heaven is going to have all these تَجْرِينِ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ All these rivers that flow under these beautiful houses and castles and fruits from whatever you desire and kebabs and all those stuff. We need that. Why? Because we are materialistic people. Generally speaking. You know, we were born into this material realm. We have a soul that we need to nurture. But generally we look after the material realm. So we need to know about these things. But look at these ayahs. فَدُخُلِي فِي عِبَادِي وَدُخُلِي جَنَّتِي What do you think we're going to do in heaven, really? What's going to give us the most pleasure? Anyone? This is this, sorry. Worship. We all imagine ourselves, no, if you're into Nintendo, what is it now? PS4, PS6, PS5, thank you. If you're into PS5 or, you know, um, all these different games, which I'll talk about games tomorrow, inshallah. Very big business. If you're into this PS5 and you're really, really into it, like, you know, you spend hours and hours into it, you think, okay, my paradise, I want you be able to play five PS5s and have three different games on at the same time, do all this stuff. Or if you, if you love HSP, whatever food you like, like, that's all I'm gonna eat in paradise. Guess what? Really, in heaven, in paradise, we're gonna leave all that aside, and the one thing that we're gonna want to do is worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, that's gonna give us the pleasure that we're looking for. All those things, they're really very superficial and um, not going to give us any results. One of the things that I, I really want to highlight tonight is, you know, I keep saying tonight's the first night of many, tonight's the first night where we're going to give birth to a new year, it's a new dawn, right? Resolution, think about what you're going to do to improve yourself. But someone here might, well not here, someone who might hear this might think, you know, brother Sayyid, you see in Qom, you don't understand. In here, I'm stuck. There's so many sinful things to do, there's so many things to see. I'm just like, I'm gone, man. There's no hope for me. Some of us feel like, we feel that weakness, that mental weakness will go down. That's okay. Just remember this ayah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul ya ibadi al-ladhina asrafu ala anfusihim la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna Allah yaghfiru al-dhubu jami'ah inna huwa al-ghafur rahim Say, say, the Prophet is telling him to tell us. We might be too scared to go to Allah straight away because of our sins. We're too embarrassed. Say to them, Ya ibadi, oh my worshippers, 
La taqmatu min rahmatillah. Don't despair from my mercy. You know, it's a greater sin to despair from the mercy of Allah. Remember the cup? The water that is contained in the cup is smaller than the container. We are smaller than the sins. No, the sins are smaller than the mercy of Allah. No matter what sin you committed, it does not matter. You can list them from A to Z. It doesn't matter. Don't despair from the mercy of Allah. If I have sinned, tonight's the night that I'm going to resolve and ensure that I walk the, the steps of the Bayt. And we're going to go through some of those steps. يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقمتوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا. Certainly, definitely, Allah subhanahu wa taala forgives all sins. Certainly, He is the one that forgives. إن هو the important one where a man asks Imam Sadiq about the sins that he has, and he goes, you know what? They ask him like this man doesn't fast, and he goes to him and says, why aren't you fasting? Too much like I'm hopeless. I don't have hope. Imam Sadiq says, I fear your despair of Allah more than the sins. Don't worry about the sins, just don't despair. Sheikh Baha'i in his Tashkul has a story, he writes a story of a man in a city, tell me just three minutes before. Of a story of a man in a city, in a village. When he died, nobody was going to go to his funeral. Nobody. He was known as a sinner, basically. He was a sinner. We won't mention the sin, it's not necessary, but basically he was known to sin. Everybody knew he was a sinner. Nobody was going to go. Except for this one, Arif, one Gnostic, who had a dream, and he was told, literally told, that he needs to go to the funeral of this person who nobody was going to go to. This wife of his would have had to. She had to pay for the horses. She was uh, going to take him somewhere in the desert outside of the city to bury him. Anyway, this Gnostic wakes up, runs over to where they were going to bury him, basically saves the day and says, Come back, we're going to take him to the grave of the Muslimin. They didn't even allow him to go there. Let's take him back to the grave of the Muslimin and bury him. Everybody heard about this. Why is this Gnostic going to this, this Arif? Why is he going to this uh, person's funeral? They all gather and they end up. Praying Salatul Mayit, and there were hundreds and hundreds of people who prayed Salatul Mayit for him. And later they asked him, like, why did you come? We know this is a sinner. He said, I don't know, I had a dream, I had to go. I was obligated to go. Right? He said, okay, let's ask his wife. Tell us, what is so good about this man? That why did we all come? Why did this Gnostic come to pray behind him? He said, look, I know he's a sinner, but he had three good values. Three good attributes. Number one, he always prayed. No matter how bad he was, he kept his prayers. Brothers and sisters, very important lesson. Make sure you pray. You maintain your prayer. Even if it's just, you know, whatever it is you don't feel like, whatever, just pray. Number two, he always looked after orphans. On his sofra, on where they served the food, always had two or three people who were orphaned to sit down with him. And number three, sometimes in the middle of the night, he would wake up and say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm bad. But my body is of no use to your hell. My body is of no use to the fire of hell. It won't do you any good if you throw me in hell. But it will do me a lot of good if you put me in heaven. He didn't despair. That's the point. Do not despair from me. Mercy of Allah. So, in conclusion, please recite the Salawat Ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I just want to wrap this up so that we can be ready for the next few nights. Allah created us from weakness, then made us strong, and then made us weak. This cycle here is what we are going through. During these nights, inshallah, we will take lessons from Imam Hussain from Karbala, from the Ahlul Bayt, from the Holy Quran to go through these stages and understand from 
childhood, how we should treat children, how children should treat their parents, to adulthood, where when we're strong, how they should treat each end of the weak uh, parts of the family, from their children to be very elderly, right? Marriage, business, all these things, inshallah, we'll cover as much as we can, and then we'll go to the other end of the scale where we become weak again, inshallah, without any regret. Like Muslim al Aqid, and I'll very quickly wrap this up here. We need to know when to be strong and when to be weak. Not that we are strong when we are weak, for example. When we are strong when we're supposed to be, actually, when we are actually weak in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our arrogance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is strong, but, and we're weak, but we become arrogant. On the other scale of things, Muslim ibn Aqeel, when he, was, he went to Kufa, when he went to Kufa, he had thousands of people signing for him to say that we are paying our leaders to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. But what did they do? They bought them out. And despite their numbers, despite having Imam Hussein behind them, despite having Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behind them, they were bought out and they felt weak when they should have been strong. So inshallah he will join us. Thank you again. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين. الله.